Hi and welcome. In this video, I'd like to share a project I've been working on. A simple way to measure USB-C power delivery. I've built two little gadgets that make it easy to see what's really going on with voltage, current and power. And the best part? On GitHub, you'll find everything you need. The electronic schematics, the PCB design files, the 3D printable case and of course the software. So you can build your own or even take it further. Here is a first look at the power meter. It's a small board that fits neatly into a 3D printed case. Once it's plugged into a USB-C charger and connected with a cable, the little display immediately shows voltage, current and power in real time. A simple gadget, but already quite powerful. USB-C power delivery is more than just charging. It allows devices to negotiate exactly the voltage and current they need, from 5 up to 20 volts and up to 100 watts. That's why the same cable can charge a phone, a tablet or even a laptop. This flexibility makes USB-C power delivery an ideal power source for do-it-yourself and maker projects as well. To make use of USB-C power delivery as a flexible power source, you need a small chip that can ask the charger for a specific voltage. The CH224K does exactly that, with just a handful of components it can request 5 9, 12, 15, or even 20 volts. There's a great Hackaday project with a breakout board for this chip, which makes it super easy to turn almost any USB-C charger into a compact adjustable bench supply, perfect for experiments and quick prototyping. For this project, I built two different devices. The first one is a simple power meter with a small display that shows voltage, current and power right away. The second device has no display. Instead, it connects over Wi-Fi. From any web browser, you can view the live data and it can also log voltage, current and power over many hours, so you can analyze the results later. Let's take a closer look at how the circuit works. On the left, we have a USB-C mail plug, which connects to the charger. On the right is a female connector where the load is attached, for example, the device that should be powered. Most of the connections are simply passed straight through. That includes the data lines D plus and D minus, which remain untouched. The critical pins are CC and VCON. They are responsible for the voltage negotiation and it is essential that both are connected to CC1 and CC2 of the output port. The actual charging voltage is provided on the VBUS line. To measure the current, a tiny 50 milliohm resistor is inserted in series. By measuring the small voltage drop across this resistor, the flowing current can be calculated. To power the measurement electronics themselves, a step-down converter is used. It takes any input voltage from 5 up to 20 volts and produces the stable 3.3 volts needed for the microcontroller. The measurement of voltage and current is handled by an INA219 chip, which communicates with the microcontroller via the I2C bus. In the version with a display, the microcontroller is an STM32 and the OLED display is also connected through I2C. The second version, the PD Logger, uses an ESP01S microcontroller, which provides Wi-Fi connectivity. That makes it possible to log measurements over many hours and view them later directly in a web browser. On the left side, you see the three parts of the case. The central board carries the STM32 microcontroller, the measurement electronics, and the power supply. At the bottom, you can spot the female USB-C connector, while at the top, the male plug is added. 
or better manufacturability, the plug sits on a small separate PCB connected through a six pin angled header. I ordered the PCBs from the Chinese manufacturer JLC PCB and the complete production data is included in the GitHub repository so you can have your own boards made easily. The OLED display is simply plugged onto the main board and soldered in place using two pin headers for the connections. Finally, assembling the case is straightforward. The electronics slide in, the parts fit together and the whole thing is closed with four screws. Now let's look at the second device, the PD logger. The main board holds the measurement electronics and the power supply. At the bottom you can see the female USB-C connector and at the top, just like before, a small board with a male plug is attached using a right angled pin header. I ordered these PCBs from JLC PCB as well and all the production files are available in the GitHub repository so you can have your own boards manufactured without any extra effort. Instead of a display, this version uses a plug-in ESP01S module as the microcontroller. It is simply soldered onto the board and provides the Wi-Fi connection. Assembly is just as simple as before. Slide the electronics into the case, fit the parts together and close everything with two screws. Using the PD logger is simple. Just plug the little device into a USB-C charger, connect the load with a cable, and in this example, I'm charging my tablet. Once the connection is established, the logger joins the local Wi-Fi network. If you open pdlogger.local in a web browser, you will see the live values of voltage, current, and power. The page updates every five seconds. All measurements are stored locally on the device with enough capacity for several hours. To view the history, you can just open the graphics page. Here you get the three plots, one each for voltage, current, and power over time. The horizontal scale can be adjusted with radio buttons and the vertical scale adapts automatically. In this example, the curve uh, looks a little bit noisy, but if you check the y-axis scale, you'll notice the variations are actually very small and mostly random. There's also a button to download the data as a CSV file, so you can analyze it further on your computer. So that's it, both gadgets in action. The simple power meter gives you instant feedback and the PD logger lets you track every detail over time. USB-C power delivery turns an ordinary charger into a flexible lab supply. And with just a bit of do-it-yourself effort, you can really make the most of it. The PCBs for both devices were made at JLC PCB and you'll find all the production data in the GitHub repository, along with the schematics, the 3D printable case, and the software. So feel free to build your own experiment and improve it further. If you enjoyed this project, please give it a try and share your results. Thanks for watching.